See, this is why nobody hires me to be their interior decorator, because I would do exactly that. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there for the fond recollections that lie there. good folk. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, back with another thrift haul. Ooh, I've got some goodies for you today. As usual, I'm going to fly through the things that I sort of already showed you before, but they're up and ready right now. Now, I will say this. Some of the items I'm going to show you today are buy it now. That's right. They're only in the shop as long as they sit there and when they're gone, they're gone. So some things are up for auction and some are listed as a buy it now. So if you see anything you like in this video, go over and check out the uh, old curiosity shop. That's the eBay store and the description, the link is in the description box below. A Bicycle Kitty Cat, it is embossed, so it is an old one, but not from the 30s. Probably this is something that was made maybe even as late as the 1970s with those, with those colors, I would guess, but the embossed part doesn't show up very well. Nothing is broken. There are a few creases, but no tape on the front, only on the back. Finally, I got the Sirocco shelves listed as well. I love these very classic, you know, 1960s decor. What would you put on the top? Hang them on your wall and put all your little, all your little uh, figurines who have had their heads broken off and re-glued. <laughs> there seems to be, speaking of figurines with heads broken off and re-glued, these poor little things, uh, well, one of them is a poor little thing. That one's okay. That one was decapitated, sadly. Now, his head was glued back on. You see the glue? Actually, it looks like, wait a minute. Is that the one with his head glued back on? No, this one is. Hold on. His head broke off right here. See that? and it was glued back on. Now they did a good job. It was a clean break. You really have to study it, uh, you know, to see. And you know, you wouldn't see unless you pick it up and take a magnifying glass to it. They're not, they are salt and pepper shakers. All right, see, Japan probably. So they're the little crying babies. Now nothing is chipped and he's okay. But this little one, again, head was re-glued. See, this is why nobody hires me to be their interior decorator, because I would do exactly that. I grouped these, to, I'm here, <laughs> I put these together in one grouping for my Anchor Hawking Moonstone Collectors. You can get a nappy, and you can get a little bowl all in the same uh, listing. So, right? You know how much I love my Moonstone, very underappreciated, I always say that. Your autumn baking season is right around the corner. And so, ginger snaps, molasses cookies, hermits, if you're in New England, nothing tastes better than if it's whipped up in an amber, a vintage amber mixing bowl. And we have two of them. So Jeanette, Anchor Hocking, Federal, they all made bowls like this. And here we have two, they're the same size. I don't know how two of the same size you know, came together, but we've got two in a beautiful sort of yellowish amber color. So great to pull these out for your September, October, November cooking. If you like to decorate and use seasonal colors, there are no chips or cracks on the mixing bowls and I'm selling them together in one auction. Look at the colors on that, you know, and when we see colors like this, what do we think of? immediately. Uh, we think of uh, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Germany, and some of the things made in Japan. We think of things coming out of that era. And of course this is a made in Czechoslovakia piece. And it's something that's made between the two wars, obviously, between 
Uh, so this, this comes out of the 1930s. It's very Art Deco. Uh, these things were not expensively made, but the color is just wonderful. It's bold, it's, it's deco, it makes no apologies for the mixture of colors. I like the black handle. No chips or cracks on it. And um, this is really nice. So, you deco folk, there you go. I love that thing. Here's a radio for sale. Now this is to be restored or it's for uh, display purposes only. So this may end up, you know, probably going to a radio collector who will actually bring it back to life. You know, um, I'm working on some other radios, but I'm thinning out some of my radios. This is a 19, I think, 37, 38, 39 Philco. Um, yeah, 1939, I think. So right before the war, we got one veneer chip there, easy. Original top, original finish, which can be, of course, cleaned up. I love the veneer. The original Philco knobs. Uh -huh. And this is, like, this is a little portable. Uh, and you get the extra push button channel selector here. Where is it? So we can, we can see if we can get uh, the Bing Crosby uh, Andrew Sisters show on there. I love the sound that the on off switches make. All right, and then we have the, the uh, tuning dial here. Does this have police band on it? Or has it got some short wave? This one has, um, yeah, the, the, it says police, which was, a, that was a, that was in vogue at that time. So there's another, there's another freak, there's another band. Where is it? I don't think you can see it. Um, you're probably not going to hear anything on it today. Anyway, the guts are all there. It's great to have an original back. Um, everything is in there ready for someone to restore it or simply display it. Um, the cord is gone and I purposely, yes, cut the cords off of old radios that have not been restored because I don't want people plugging them in. We'll see if it works. You know we've talked about this before. Don't plug in an old radio to see if it works. Get it to somebody who can bring it up on a Variac and so that you don't, um, if you've got problems inside, some of those condensers and whatnot have gone. You'll fry your transformer and you'll just do more damage to it. Uh, so that's the reason why unrestored, I cut the cord off and uh, that's the way it should be. Okay, now if you buy this from me, you can't gut it and stick a Bluetooth speaker in there or I'm not selling it to you. <laughs> All right, Woo, let's have some, what is this? It's really bad. Uh, Woodered, woodered down iced tea mix that I made. Uh. Reminds me of the Kool Aid they used to give us in Bible school when I was a kid. It was always so watered down, you know? We had a Dixie cup of Kool Aid and we would get two Ritz crackers. Ooh. We don't want those little Methodist kids losing it and going nuts. We're in the money. We're in the money. We got a lot of money just to get along. All right. Thank you, subscribers. I am aware of hat pin holders, but these threw me off because it's a matching pair. And I was thinking maybe little vases. I thought that this came with a dresser set, like a ladies' dress vanity set, but. I was thinking more in line of vases because there's two. I didn't realize that some of the vanity sets were manufactured with two matching hat pin holders, and that's what we've got here. So thank you to, you know, you learn something every day. Nippon on the bottom. And these have no cracks and they're beautiful. So use them as vases. I don't think anybody uses hat pins anymore, but. Okay, the French flower frog, lovely. It says made in France on the bottom. And I think I counted 19 holes. 
And I love these frogs that are solid on the bottom and you can put water inside and these will hold water. So when you're, when you're, uh, so you can sit this in a decorative console bowl, which you'd think I'd have a console bowl within reach. And you don't have to put water in your console bowl. The water can go right down inside of this. So your little flowers can drink, but you, do, you don't get water stains in your console bowl. Speaking of console bowl, here are the candlesticks without the bowl. Now, I'm, again, there will be no big autumn sale this year like I do every year. So each auction I've been throwing in some autumn looking pieces. And here are lovely amber candlestick holders. Look at this gorgeous. And it's not flowers. You know, we always have encrusted gold flowers. This time we have, look at that pattern. Isn't that nice? I don't know what style, what you would call that. Almost sort of like a William Morris wallpaper, maybe. Eh. But these are from the 20s or 30s, that era. Just beautiful little amber uh, candlesticks holders. If you are a collector of pens, here's a lovely um, Sangbush, S-E-N-G-B-U-S-C-H number 300. So your inkwell would go down in there and then we, you can put your, you've got room for one, two, three pens and nibs can go in there for the desk. Or that's a great place to, you know, when you've had a nice evening, you come home and you're at the vanity and you're getting ready to go to bed. This is where you'll put your lipsticks, your Lee press on nails down in there and that one false eyeball. You just throw that in there and you can hop in bed. Now you guys told me we had a vote and you said, well, I don't remember. I don't think I counted up. I don't think I counted up the votes. And we're just playing here. I know that some lovely old granny spent hours on this and they are delightful. We're just having fun. Most of you said how adorable, but Mrs. Claus, or maybe she got into the eggnog. Um, <laughs> she, Mrs. Claus is a little frightening. A lot of work did go into this. She's got little bloomers on or whatever that is. And these are nice and clean. They don't smell, you know, funny. It's kind of the church bazaar kind of thing that you would find, right? Someone is going to just love these. Sort of kitschy and whatnot. But yeah, that messes claws. Ooh, give her a kiss. All right. But it was funny to see your reactions, you know, to these two. Okay, I have four of these plates. These are made by Payton City, and all of the American dinnerware companies introduced a sort of southwestern style. You know, when the Fiesta colors became popular, late 30s into the 40s, so it was a popular theme. And, and it's called Shell Crest because we have a shell-shaped crest on both sides of the plate, Payton City, and you can see the wonderful Southwestern. Um, these are big, I've got four of these, and these are big plates for the, you know, we think of the dinner plates as much smaller than, but these are, these are 10 inch plates. So if, if you, you know, you can get a lot of pork chops on that. You get four of these, very nice. Look at these little things. They don't match, but they're all made of green depression glass. They have their original lids. And of course they glow. I think one is marked, that one has the Hazel Atlas. These two don't, so who knows? I love this one. You know, put your uh, cinnamon and sugar in there for your little toast in the morning. So these three. Just eight. I've got eight plates, which remind me of Hocking Rings, but I don't believe this is, um, this doesn't have the embossed banded rings on it. So this is probably another company. Um, 
And I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, ho hocking banded rings. But again, as I said, hocking has those embossed banded rings and I don't see these this is completely smooth there's no divot or whatever you call it for the uh, saw for the saucer to sit on but that doesn't mean that these couldn't couldn't be saucers or under plates for sherbet cups or they can be dessert little dessert plates you know because you don't have that teacup ring so they're very nice and they're all you know they've all got that popular look of the depression. Here is a wonderful fake wood, fake mahogany um, um, drinks serving tray. Yeah, okay, with a um, uh, reticulated gallery. Ooh, somebody's been watching Antiques Roadshow. You're as funny as a cry for help. Reticulated gallery. Is that what this is? I think so. Um, if it's not, you'll tell me. All right. Drab, is this drab? It's just, well, it's that, I guess it's that avocado green 70s color. So if, you, if you're doing a 70s kitchen, lid, dish, no chips or cracks. having flashbacks to church covered dish dinners in the 70s you know with weird things that you can't identify but it gets put on your plate and you're supposed to sit there and eat it These candlesticks have sold these amethyst ones and I'm packing them up today so if you're watching and you go hey I bought those candlesticks you did and I have to pack them up today but what I'm showing you is I have two bobesh attachments I don't know the plural for bobesh bobeshes I'm just gonna say a pair of, of bobesh attachments because I don't I don't know what the proper plural word for bobesh is so we'll leave it there but here they are. These are nice ones with not quite a gothic cut, but a nice uh, thick crisp, uh, prism there. Let's see, of course, you know how this works. The, uh, so this is what you're getting, two of these, not the candle. So you get two of these. Here's one, the other one is over there somewhere. And it just sits down on top of any type of candlestick that you like. Of course, it has to be tall enough so they can dangle. Those little amber things, it wouldn't work with those. All right, this is all glass, and then these beautiful glass <clears throat> prisms here. Uh, we're not missing any prisms, and, and the points don't appear to be chipped on any of them. So let's see if we can get it. Wait a minute. And they just sit on there like that. And they can elegantly be added to any candlestick that you want. Now, I paid a lot for these, but <clears throat> you, normally you get that typical cut prism that we see all the time. And these, I don't find as much, these larger ones. So that's the reason why I went ahead. But anyway, wonderful for entertaining, and you can use these on any since they're removable and they simply slide slide on you can use them anywhere you want these must have just come out of a south philly or a north philly uh kitchen cabinet and i cleaned these these are squeaky clean now and ready for you um <clears throat> excuse me i'm getting a something you know in the back of your throat jeanette shakers we have the salt and pepper right here they have this sort of beehive ribbed effect they're not marked but they are 
the Jeanette, the original lids. You say, look at the dents all over those lids. Yes. There are reproduction lids, but the diehards love these old dented aluminum lids. Don't you throw these lids away. These lids are worth... Okay, so uh, that's just... You, you'll, you almost never find old lids, but that they don't have these little dents on them, and that's wonderful. This is for this is a kitchen set, a range set, so flour and sugar, but here we've got salt and pepper. Excellent. And then uh, <clears throat> another unmarked piece that matches. And they did make these, Jeanette, so it's not missing any type of a label. You could put in there whatever you want. Now that's a replacement lid of some sort, this Bakelite lid. It fits perfectly but it's not what originally came on this. I still think it looks pretty smart with them because of the black lettering. And <clears throat> I think these are listed as a buy it now. Now, one thing I want to say to anyone who may, not, if you are a new collector, let me see if I can, if you haven't handled a lot of this type of glass, or if you're a novice collector or a new collector, you may get a hold of a piece like this and go, he said no cracked, and I see two cracks. There are, and I don't really guess that the, you call them straw marks on these, but you'll get these little lines <clears throat> that can sometimes even fill in with just grease and dirt, and they look like cracks, but they, but they are not. It's just part of the manufacturing process, and I know I'm not going to be able to get you, well, maybe. Can you see right here? I'm running my finger along. It should appear to be a little bit. That, folks, is not a crack. There we go. I think you can see that. Okay. Um, whatever that imperfection is, it shows up all the time on this glass. And so you have to just accept it it's part of the manufacturing process but it's it's not considered any damage okay the last thing Ooh, the let get ready for this you're not ready for this am i in the frame wait a minute <clears throat> some of you already saw this on my community page are you ready Wait, this is going to be my thumbnail. Oh, hold on. See, a thumbnail, you have to freeze, and hopefully um, YouTube will capture this as a thumbnail. Ready? Here I go. We'll see. <gasps> what is it? It's made by Fenton Art Glass Company. 1935-36, I think there were only two years, right in the middle of the Depression. It's called a Ming Pitcher Iced Tea Set Lemonade Set. It would have come with tumblers, and the tumblers had little coasters. I found this in a thrift shop on Frankfurt Avenue in Philly yesterday, two days ago. And I almost, you know what, right there on the middle of the floor fell out it's pink it's etched you're not even saying it's got a black handle now sometimes these handles show up i think as blue the pink and black is wonderful this space could could come uh in green it could come in i think they're chinese yellow as they called it i don't remember all the different colors but here we have the pink and the black Mm-hmm. Even acid etched on the bottom. This is the way Fenton made this. Yeah. And so, you know, by the, by the early 40s, Fenton was almost bankrupt. Fenton was almost... And then it was the hobnail patterns that saved them. But this expensive, this was good department store glass in the 1930s. This wasn't given away at movie theaters. You went to fine gift shops, jewelry stores, mm -hmm. the glass and china departments, 
in uh, John Wanamaker department store and in Macy's and whatever stores you have in your area, Neiman Marcus and Marshall F F um, Wait a minute. No, that's not a crack. I almost... That's just the feel of the... Anyway, I am selling this as a buy it now. If, if anybody goes to the eBay store and you say, wait a minute, I don't see those Geodite shakers. I don't see that Ming vase. It's, it would be because they have sold. So, yeah, sometimes auctions, sometimes buy it nows. I couldn't believe it. On the bottom shelf in that thrift shop. I couldn't believe it. Okay, that's it. I had fun finding all of these things and now I'm ready to get back out there and find some mo. Because every day that I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, what just got put out on the shelves hmm, that I'm missing? So anyway, thank you for watching. What was your favorite item? Was it the Ming Fenton iced tea pitcher or that Halloween cat or the Jadeite shakers? Or was it She's coming to get you. I don't know. I would, I would be nice most of the year and skip the naughty if I knew she was watching me. But that's it. Thank you for watching me. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying wait for the cat. And so long for now. Ooh.